Did you know that 40% of Australians believe they're not getting enough sleep? And it's no wonder. As a nation, we're all working longer hours than ever before just to keep pace. And thanks to the demands of the digital age, that work has completely invaded our home lives. What's left are millions of Aussies getting through each day on very little sleep. What happens to us when we don't get enough sleep? Because seven and a half million of us are reporting that we don't. And I know personally, when I don't get enough sleep, I turn into the biggest grump. And then I think about all those mums out there who are up all night. But what does sleep deprivation do physically to our bodies? So how much sleep do our bodies really need? I've never taken part in a science experiment before, but I've come to the Queensland University of Technology Centre for Accident Research and Road Safety to find out what a lack of sleep actually does to our bodies. Dr Chris Watling is the Principal Researcher for Sleepiness and Fatigue here at the centre, and according to him, the quality of your waking life is directly affected by how you sleep. I know it's a silly question, but why do we actually need sleep? We need to sleep. Human beings have evolved with sleep. So to think that we cannot sleep and still perform at an optimal level just doesn't happen. Could you get by with no sleep? Um, anyone can get by, but it's the amount of impairment that we actually suffer that it's kind of the trade-off. Researchers now believe that sleep deprivation directly affect the way our bodies regenerate cell tissue and produce certain proteins, finding out that people who lack sleep in general have higher rates of diabetes, stroke and blood pressure. The problem for all of us though, is that it's not as easy to recover lost sleep as you might think. So if you lose say five hours sleep during the week, you're not gonna get it back over the weekend. And as you'll find out tonight, you know, you're gonna lose a few hours sleep, you're not gonna catch that up the next day You'll get some recovery sleep, but not all of it. According to the Sleep Health Foundation, sleep deprivation was linked to over 3,000 deaths in the last two years. This is an issue that affects all of us. So I volunteered to this life-size driving simulator to find out how a single sleepless night can affect the body. OK, so I had a full 10 hours of sleep last night, so I'm doing this first part of the experiment fully rested. Oh wow, we're in, we're in the world. <laughs> You're in simulation world. So essentially you can just drive now, Caroline. And just let us know how you're feeling throughout the drive. You know, so you can talk to us at any time, okay? Just take some time to get used to the steering and acceleration. Yeah, it does sound like, it's like quite, quite strange on, on your eyes. Yeah. The simulator is set up to replicate driving on a long country road where most sleep-related accidents occur. All in my rear view mirrors and yep. everything. Oh, look at me drift over there. Every aspect of my driving skill is being monitored, from the car's speed, its position on the road, to my overall alertness. Um, so how are you feeling right now? Everything feels OK? I, it's scary. <laughs> oh, there's someone coming. This is quite intriguing. Like, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it's, it's getting used to it with your eyes as well. But this is the most expensive car I have ever driven. After 60 minutes of driving on a full night's sleep, the first part of the experiment is done. Now for part two. The average sleep required for our bodies to function properly is seven to eight hours a night. Anything less can have detrimental effects, which is all well and good for Chris once he's finished wiring me up. But I won't be allowed a wink of slumber until 3 a.m. This is going to be a long night. Did you know that inadequate sleep is such a major health and safety hazard? One Australian dies every day from falling asleep at the wheel or from an industrial accident due to a lack of sleep. To examine this issue, earlier in the show, I did a 60 minute virtual driving test with a full night's sleep under my belt. Part two requires that I only get two hours sleep before I retake the same test again. So Chris is wiring me up with a truly disturbing array of electrodes which will monitor my metabolism and brainwaves. So now the fun begins. About 10, 30, 11 o'clock and uh, basically the beginning of my night, so wish me luck. I can't believe that it is only, oh no.
We can do this. This is definitely what I envisage for myself. From a career in glamorous television. This moment. Because I look the part, don't I? <laughs> Every single minute takes forever. Sorry, I'm delirious. Okay, team. I have six minutes to get to sleep. I certainly don't feel like I've had any sleep. But saying that, it's back to the simulator I go to put my massively depleted oh, skills oh, to the test. Oh. <laughs> okay. I think this is going to be quite hard. Right. Okay. Away you go. Here we go. Ah, she's really over the speed limit now. She's like 13 kilometres over. It's an 80 zone and she's driving at 93, 94. She keeps fluctuating between that. In this condition, it's like having a blood alcohol level of 0.05. And if you go 24 hours without sleep, it's the same as being 0.1. And that's seriously dangerous. I'm so glad I'm not behind the wheel of a real car right now. This is hard work. This is a great example of, you know, how lack of sleep can affect not only driving performance, which is scary when you go, but also, you know, it permeates so many other aspects of our lives. You know, we're so impaired by sleepiness throughout the day. And unfortunately, the only cure for sleepiness is sleep itself. With 60 minutes up, I can't get out of here fast enough, but I think I did okay. Oh, release me. How are you going? That's tough, hey? Just to try to fight it and... Whew, how'd I go? Uh, we'll have a chat about that. Oh, I sound like I'm in trouble. So how did I go? If you think about today compared to yesterday, you were, at one point you were 400 times more likely to crash. Wow. You experienced one night of sleep deprivation, um, and we call that acute sleep deprivation, but some major issues start to come when the, that sleep deprivation happens on a regular basis. So it's really important for your wellness to actually maintain a proper sleep-wake routine. Well, oh, that has been really interesting, being a guinea pig. And I think what I've learned is psychologically, you think that you can battle through sleep deprivation, but the impairment is always there, and it doesn't matter what you do, the only way you can make up for it is to rectify that sleep debt. So can you get by on just a couple of hours? Absolutely not. <laughs>